Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. I'm here today to talk to you about Ibis and DuckDB and how you can bring really fast analytics to SQLite. I know it's been a while since I made a video. I was moving, and there's a bunch of stuff happening in my life, so everything's good now. We're all moved, and now I can get back to making hopefully interesting YouTube videos about Ibis. And so with that, today we're going to talk about how you can use uh, IBIS and DuckDB to analyze SQLite data kind of unchanged and we're, we're going to have to do a bit of cleaning and we might encounter a bit of errors or whatever but this is pretty off the cuff and so I'm just going to get into it. All right here we go. So we're going to start with uh, with our interactive IBIS import and then we're going to just fire up an in-memory DuckDB connection. Th this is sort of like your own in-memory kind of analytics engine. And in 6.0, which is which was just released uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe, uh, one of our contributors added oops, a, an attach SQLite method, which allows you to pass a database in. And we're going to give it some PyPI download data. So we're going to go to PyPI, and then we're going to go to, let's say, um, let's look at the June uh, information. And so this is just going to, basically register all of the tables that are in that database um, with DuckDB. And we can confirm that by plopping into SQLite, um, SQLite's command line directly from my Python. Uh, and let's do data PyPI 2023-06-16-12. Now we're in the SQLite shell, which we launched from my Python. And we can say dot schema and see what's in here. Right, we've got all this stuff: scorecard, package URLs, maintainers, etc. Let's go back into IPython. Again, we just connected to our SQLite database using DuckDB. So let's see what tables we've got in there. Boom! So now we've got all of our SQLite tables available for us. Let's just pull out the packages data. We're going to say con.tables.packages. Cool, and we can look at the schema. We've got all that stuff, and it's like. Whoops, okay, type mismatch in the yanked column. Let's say we don't care about yanked, so let's just drop some stuff. Now, in this case, I've already t tinkered with the data a bit. I haven't changed any of the data, but I've discovered that there are a few columns in here that don't quite map on to DuckDB's type system when we want to pull out a few of the rows using PyArrow. So that's probably a, a, an upstream bug, or maybe it's a bug on IBIS. Either way, we'll get that taken care of. So we're just going to drop these three columns. It looks like maybe I can't spell vulnerabilities. Maybe it doesn't have that column. Let's see. Packages.schema. What did I even... Did I even pull out the right... Yeah, I got packages. Okay. So it looks like it looks like this field... I was playing with some some other data, the next, the next batch of data, and there's actually some additional columns in there. And that was what I sort of use this on. So let's get rid of this has vulnerabilities because that doesn't actually appear to be a column in this data set. Cool. So now we can actually look at what's in the data. And if we just we just sort of count the rows here. Often let I mean we can let's see if this actually is, you know, how fast this is with SQLite. It might be fast if there's an index on the table uh, on a on a primary if there's a primary key, it might be fast. So let's do select count star from packages. Okay, it's still pretty fast. So that's good. Not, not a whole lot of speed up there. Um, but of course, like we have access to all of DuckDB's functionality. So if SQLite's missing a piece of functionality, we can we can do it in DuckDB. So let's let's take a look at uh, the downloads of of, uh, of a popular package. Um, let's look at TensorFlow. All right, so we've got uh, from let's see the total downloads it looks like of the date this was recorded uh, was 950,000 or so and of course this is all happening inside DuckDB so you can just look at the SQL there and we could we could probably do this with SQLite if we wanted to um, but once you start getting you know into maybe some of the bigger data sets things get a little can get a little slow with SQLite to, you know depending on what you've what you've sort of how you've sort of set up your database. So what other columns do we have going on here? 
Uh, we've got requires requires Python, the, the current version, when it was uploaded, recorded at, download, scorecard overall. So let's see if we can find the oldest package, or the top five oldest packages. So we're going to say we want to see the top, we want to see top five packages by name uh, computed by, um, let's see, the min uh, packages dot the min of the uploaded at column. So in this data set, it looks like the oldest package for this particular month of data was something called securely. Uh, I don't know what any of these these things are. Um, let's maybe look at the top five uh, packages by download. And we could say packages dot download max spelled that wrong should be downloads so we've got perhaps some fairly unsurprising libraries here um, Bodo 3 it looks like got uh, if I can read 30 million downloads so that's pretty interesting if we extend that out to maybe the top 10 we've got a bunch of other stuff it looks like AWS is kind of cornering the market on the top 10 so that's fun and of course, we can always look at the SQL to verify that things are doing what we expect. We're sort of selecting all the rows and then giving a group by and uh, sorting by uh, the max of that grouped column computation. All right, what else have we got going on here? So not only can you attach individual SQLite databases, you can also read individual tables with the read SQLite method. And this is available on DuckDB. I think only DuckDB at the moment uh, because I think that's one of our, our data, our backends that kind of supports this kind of poking into other databases. Um, so we can poke at the 2023.07. Oh, sorry, it's under PyPI, 2023.07. Oh, and we know there's a table called packages in there, but let's pull out depths instead. That's showing the dependencies. Um, and then we'll just call this depths. So we pulled out that table. Of course, it's got a schema. Got the package name, dep name, dep specifier. Um, and so we can poke around here and see, you know, what are the dependencies of, uh, of a particular package. So we know that Ibis has a good uh, good number of dependencies, especially for all the backends that uh, that we support. So if we pull up depths here of Ivis framework, and then we can we can just count them. It's like, wow, there's 99 dependencies. That's that's a lot. Um, there's probably some this is probably over maybe a larger period of time. So let's poke around and, and see. Um, see what's going on here. I'm going to pull this out as a data frame just so that I can poke around a bit more with some in-memory data. Execute. Got the data frame. Yeah, it looks like, let's see. Oh, and it's, okay, it's actually showing the transitive dependencies and all of the, if they're a member of extra. And of course, if, if the extras overlap at all, um, then there'll be some duplicates here. Um, so let's see if we can let's see if we can do oh man ampersand is always a pain in the butt with python um extra uh is um all or oh god syntax uh or extra is null Let's see if that is a little bit more reasonable. Okay, that's more reasonable-ish. Uh, it looks like, yeah, let's, okay, so let's look at um, dep name and unique after this. Oop, not unique and unique. Okay, 
So now this is capturing all of the unique dependencies here after we've removed the duplicate all extra. And we use all as an as a way of, uh, of making it easy to, to just like give a developer the kitchen sink uh, when they're working on IBIS, which can be a with which is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, can can cause a lot of headaches and confusion, but it's there if you if you're feeling brave. Um, what else have we got going on here? I don't know what this version column is. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's dependencies. And then uh, what, what other tables did we have in here? We had maintainers. Um, I don't know, maybe there's some interesting stuff we could do with maintainers here. Con.tables.maintainers. We can at least look at it. Maybe there's some Okay, so we can look at this is this is I mean it doesn't look like there's a lot of it doesn't look like there's obviously anything interesting here, but if you if you think about it for a second, there actually are some interesting things you could look at, like you could look at what packages have the fewest number of maintainers, right? That's pretty interesting. Um it's kind of an important thing here. It looks like somebody has a package named 0, which is probably some kind of name squatting. I mean, these are hilariously named packages. Um, we could look at packages that don't, that aren't, you know, the number of packages that aren't valid identifiers, I guess, but you could probably do that with the packages package, or sorry, the packages table, packages package. Um, so let's look at the, let's look at what maintainers maintain the most packages. So we would say, um, Top, everything is a top K today, I guess. Um, name top K five, and we're gonna go by um, uh, main package name. Probably want to do n unique because uh, if one person, well, there shouldn't be duplicates. Let's see. Something called OCA is. Uh, maintaining 14,000 Python packages? That sounds totally crazy. Some of these are organizations. Yandex Bot is probably from Yandex, and OpenStack CI, that's probably from OpenStack. I mean, OCA is almost certainly an organization. It's hard to tell. Microsoft's got 637 packages. IceMac, um, Hanosh. Some of these look like actual people, which is kind of interesting. Um, so Godspeed to whoever is whoever Alex JXD is and is maintaining 1400 uh, packages on PyPI. We could we could let's poke into the OCA thing a bit and see if there's anything that we can find that's uh, that's you know indicative of uh, what that is. I suppose I could just Google, but why do that? Because that's not very fun. Okay. Okay, well, it's probably an organization, maybe, and it looks like they just have a ton of packages. Um, let's let's see if let's set the uh, the IBIS wrapper limit a bit higher. Config options. Let's set it to twenty. Okay. Yeah, there's just a ton of packages here, but it sounds it seems. I mean, this is like. I don't even I don't even want to look into what Odoo add-on account is, but it's a thing. They have a lot of packages. Let's look at the uh, let's look at the next one. What was that? Uh, let's look at what Alex JXD is doing. Okay. Uh, name equals Alex JXD. Maybe Alex JXD works for Alibaba Cloud, um, but there's a ton of Alibaba Cloud related packages. Um, so let's look at the count of those, 1446. Um, and then, you know, uh, let's look at package name. Um, starts with uh, Alibaba Cloud. Some. 
So like roughly half our Alibaba cloud and let's see what else uh let's see what doesn't start with Alibaba cloud and it's left over there Aliyun there's Ali cloud and Alibaba dash cloud okay we could break out a little bit more fancy string matching we could say we fixed a bug in our research in 6.02 so we've got Alibaba cloud and that could have an optional hyphen there um, or it could be, um, I mean, if we're being, if we're trying to be super pedantic here, I guess we could do this, do this, and then maybe pay, and then we've got um, Ali, Yoon, Ant Chain. Looks like we're getting closer here. Which is looking at categories of things this person maintains because they work on 1400 packages. You know, I okay, so here we've gotten to things that don't have a very, you know, a large number of common prefix packages, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, that's how you can use Ibis to query SQLite, and we're going to release 6.1 soon. Um, looks like someone is, is asking, does it run? crisis and the answer is I don't know um, but that's how you can that's how you can use DuckDB to query SQLite maybe at some point we'll get DuckDB to run crisis I don't know um, thanks for tuning in and I'll be back next week with another uh, another video talking about IBIS see ya <laughs>